All right, so, so far we've talked about z-scores and percentiles and how to find the area underneath the normal curve. So you're still going to need that normal z-score percentile chart for this video. And instead of just looking at the standard normal distribution, where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, we're going to actually apply this uh, to some real-life problems, in particular, serving speeds uh, for Rafael Nadal. So let's jump right into example one here. It says, in the 2008 Wimbledon tennis tournament, Rafael Nadal averaged 115 miles per hour on his first serves. Assume that the distribution of his first serve speeds is normal, with a mean of 115 miles per hour and a standard deviation of 6 miles per hour. Part A says, about what proportion of his first serves would you expect to be slower than 103 miles per hour? So a general rule of thumb, anytime you see a problem that says or mentions anything about a normal distribution, the very first thing we want to do is make a nice sketch and properly label it uh, for our normal curve. So I'm going to do my best, as always, to make a nice normal curve. I'm going to put the label over here. That means this distribution is normal with a mean of 115 and a standard de deviation of 6. Now let's go ahead and put a marker smack dab in the middle for the mean at 115 miles per hour. So there we go, that's the expectation every time there's a question about a normal distribution. You can sketch the curve, put a label on it that shows the mean and standard deviation, and just mark off the mean in the middle. And now we're looking to estimate about where 103 would fall. We know it's below the mean somewhere. So I'm gonna put a boundary at 103, and we're gonna shade everything below it. If this is my number line, it said, below or slower actually than 103. So let's shade everything, all the surf speeds that were slower than 103 here. So a really rough estimate at this point, right? It's definitely less than half the graph. Looks like less than 25% of the graph. We want to get a more exact estimate. And we can do that by converting 103 to its z-score and then looking it up on the chart. So the z-score for 103 miles per hour we would take 103, subtract the mean of 115, and divide by the standard deviation, which was 6, which puts us at negative 2 for our z-score, meaning we're two standard deviations below the mean. So to get a precise value for how much area is shaded here in green, we can look up negative 2 on the z-score chart the proportion of observations less than a z-score of negative 2, according to the chart, is 0 0.0228. Which, although my drawing is pretty rough and not drawn to scale, that would represent the percent of serves that Rafael Nadal served below 103 miles per hour, according to this distribution. So that's really the gist. We can take this real-world applicable problem, and as long as it's a normal distribution, we can convert those boundaries to z-scores and look up those z-score values on our chart. Part B says, about what proportion of his first serves would you expect to exceed 120 miles per hour? So again, very first thing, really important that we get in the habit of this, make that nice normal distribution we can label it and mark our mean right in the middle so we know it's normal with a mean of 115 and a standard deviation of 6. And then as best we can, we'll try to estimate where our boundary marker will go here for 120. And we're looking at serve speeds that would exceed that number, so we're going to shade everything above 120. So right away, this already tells the person reading the work that you know the distribution is normal, what the mean is, you know what the standard deviation is, and you've actually shaded, you've represented it with a drawing, the exact area that we're looking for. So let's convert 120 to a z-score here. So we'll take 120, subtract the mean, divide by standard deviation, and our z-score is approximately 0.833. So not quite one whole standard deviation above the mean. So 
So when we go to use our chart, we're trying to answer this question. We're trying to represent this scenario to solve the proportion of values above that z-score. Well, unfortunately, the chart only reads values to the left of our boundary. So if you go look up 0.833 on the z-score chart, it's going to say something like 79.9% of the graph, which is obviously wrong just by looking at our graph here. This thing's definitely not even half the graph, let alone 79 or 80% of it. So we know it's actually the opposite of that. Well, one, short we could, one shortcut we can use, though, is if we want to know everything above this boundary, since the curve is supposed to be symmetric, that would be equal to everything below the same boundary on the other side. Those two things should be equal, which means if we look up on the z-score chart, everything below the opposite of that number, in other words, less than negative 0.833, that should give us the right value. So all the stuff above positive 0.833 would be equal to all the stuff below negative 0.833 on the standard normal distribution, because in theory, this thing is supposed to be perfectly symmetric. So if we look at ne negative 0.833 on the table, we get a value of about 0 0.2033, which makes sense why the other way was about 79.9% before. So in context, this 20% shaded area means that about 20.33% of Rafael Nadal's serves would exceed 120 miles per hour. So that's a really nice characteristic of the normal distribution that we can use. If you want to know the area above a certain boundary, look up the area below the opposite of that boundary. Part C says what percent of Rafael Nadal's first serves are between 100 and 110 miles per hour. So let's go ahead, make our normal distribution again, put our label here, mark off the mean, smack dab in the middle, there we go. And then as best we can, try to estimate a boundary along this x-axis number line here where 100 and 110 might go. And then I'll draw those lines vertically in shade because that's the interval we're interested in. So we want to know what proportion of Nadal serves are between 100 and 110. And we've represented that now visually. So for starters, we need the z-score for both of these values. So the z-score for 110, let's subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. It's a negative 0.83, which should be no surprise to us. In this case, I'll just keep two decimal places. And then for 100, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. Z-score is at negative 2.5 standard deviations below the mean. So to answer this question, proportion of serves between 100 and 110, the equivalent question in terms of the z-scores would be proportion of z-scores between negative 2.5 and negative 0.83. So let's start with the upper bound there, proportion of z-scores less than negative 0.83. And that would really give us everything at 110 and below. But we know that answer would be too big, just like we talked about in the previous video. So we would need to delete all the stuff at 100 and below. I'm going to clean this graph up. So all the stuff less than negative 0.83, according to the chart, is... 0 0.2033, there's that number again. And then let's subtract all the stuff from the lower bound. So proportion of z-scores less than negative 2.5. So that's subtracting 0 0.0062, the value we get from the chart. 
for a final value of 0.1968, so about 20%, which seems reasonable just based on our drawing. That's another reason why it's so valuable for us to be able to sketch these and shade these well. If you got done and your answer said something like 65%, you know right away that doesn't match our graph. That can't be correct. So in context then, that means about 19.68% of Nadal's serves are between 100 and 110 miles per hour. All right, two more parts here. I'm going to go ahead and put my normal distribution in here for both. Part D says the fastest 30% of Nadal serves go at least what speed? So again, I can mark the mean, put my label, and then I need to estimate where I could make a boundary for the fastest 30%. So I know that the area above this boundary I'm estimating would be 30%. The real question is, how fast would that serve be? Right? That's a mystery value right now. How fast would that serve have to be? So now this setting is sort of reverse of what we just did. Now we know the shaded area above our boundary. We'd like to know what value is actually on the x-axis for this boundary. So let's start with the z-score formula. And really, we're going to care about the 70th percentile because if 30% are at or above this boundary, we know that 70% would be below it. So this boundary represents the 70th percentile. So 70% is easy enough to look up on the z-score chart. Now you have to find on the inside where 70% is. It should be in the positive z-scores looks like it's 0.525, the z-score. If, if you split it between 0.52 and 0.53, right, we could say it's 0.525. So that's the z-score that corresponds to about the 70th percentile. So now the missing link. We know the mean. We know the standard deviation. We even know the z-score. Let's just use the formula. Right, the z-score formula, 0.525 will be our value for z. Then our missing value will be x. We know the mean. We know the standard deviation. So we've got the z-score formula, which relates those three pieces. And I'll leave the algebra to all you algebra buffs out there. Right? Safely multiply both sides by 6, and then add 115. We are looking at about 118.15 miles per hour. That would be at the 70th percentile for Nadal's serve speeds. All right, and then the last piece here, E says a different player, not Nadal, a different player has a standard deviation of 8 miles per hour, so this player is not as consistent, on his first serves, and 20% of his serves go less than 100 miles per hour. If the distribution of his serve speeds is approximately normal, very good, what is his average first serve speed? So if we don't know his average speed, that means we are really trying to solve for the mean. Right, I'm going to put mu here in the middle with a question mark. That's what we're trying to solve for. We already know the standard deviation is 8 miles per hour. So the question being asked refers to his average speed. Another way to say that is the mean. We don't know what the mean is. So on the graph here, I'm going to mark off the mean, and I'm just going to put a question mark. That's what we're actually trying to solve for. We know the standard deviation is 8 miles per hour. We just don't know what the mean is yet. There is one other clue, right? You have to use the other clue here to solve this one. It says 20% of his serves go less than 100 miles per hour. So you have to be able to represent that on the graph. Let's estimate about where 20% would go. And we know that this boundary would be for this player at 100 miles per hour. So I can put 100 at this boundary. So 
So here we are. We know the standard deviation. We don't know the mean, but we have a boundary and we know the area. If only there was a formula in this chapter that would relate those things. Well, really only one formula comes to mind here, right? The, the z-score formula. We know the standard deviation. We could find out what the z-score would be for this boundary. And then we know the boundaries at 100, so x would be 100. The only thing we'd have left to solve for would be the mean. So to do that, let's get the z-score for the 20th percentile. If we look up 20% on the inside of that chart, the corresponding z-score would be about negative 0.84. And then we can use that in our formula for z. So let's go ahead and put negative 0.84 in for z. 100, that's our specific x value at that boundary. We don't know what mu is, so I'm going to leave the mean as mu right there. And then we know the standard deviation is 8. So we're going to use this formula because it's exactly what we need to relate what we don't know, which is the mean, to what we do know, which is the z-score, the standard deviation, and the value at that boundary, which is 100. So algebra buffs, I'll let you handle the heavy lifting. Uh, but to summarize, multiply, multiply both sides by 8, subtract 100, Divide by negative 1, and we're looking at a mean for this player of 106.72 miles per hour. All right, so we've used z-scores and percentiles in real-life scenarios, normal distributions that we just converted to z-scores and the standard normal distribution, and we can still use those values from the table. So that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.